In the world of sports, the line between good and great often blurs. But in the 100 meters, it's definitive. There's fast, and then there's sub 10. Running 100 meters in under 10 seconds marks an athlete's entry into an elite circle. But in the modern era of sprinting, athletes are breaking the sub 10 barrier more than ever before. This poses an intriguing question. Does running sub 10 still carry the same weight, the same awe that it once did? Here comes Logan Brume. Whoa, wait a minute. Let's start by comparing the rarity of running 100 meters in under 10 seconds to a completely different kind of human achievement living to 100 years old. Now, pretend we're getting people completely at random from the global population. We'll start with 100,000. Statistically speaking, around six of them would be centenarians. Yet, in the same crowd, it's almost a certainty that none of them has run sub-10. Okay, let's go bigger. What if this crowd were 10 times larger? In a sea of a million faces, you'd find around 63 people who have lived to 100, but still no one who's broken the 10-second barrier. To find just one of these rare sprinters, you would need to extend your reach to an astounding 42 million people. The odds of being a sub 10 second sprinter are one in 42 million. Okay, but what about some more relevant comparisons in the world of sports? Of the more than 25,000 men that have played in the NFL, only around 2,200 have a Super Bowl ring. And on the global sporting stage, just 471 players have been on the winning team in the World Cup. So how do these feats compare with running 100 meters in under 10 seconds? Well, according to data from World Athletics, only 189 men have ever crossed this threshold. Statistically speaking, you're around 14 times more likely to meet a billionaire. But there's more to the sub-10 story. When we look at the data over time, there's a noticeable acceleration in the number of athletes achieving this feat. It's a fascinating shift, one that we'll explore further. But before we do, let's meet the trailblazer the first man to ever run sub 10. It's 1968, and the sprinting world is a buzz. At the US Championships, an event that would later be known as the Night of Speed, three sprinters clock win legal times under 10 seconds in their semi-final heats. For a moment, it appears the 10 second mark has finally been broken, but there's a twist. The 9.9 .9 seconds were hand-timed, Meet the AccuTrack. A new automatic, state-of-the-art timing system was also being used. And the AccuTrack tells a different story, recording all three runs at just over 10 seconds. So from an automatic timing standpoint, the barrier remains intact. In the middle of all this is Jim Hines. According to AccuTrack, he's the quickest of the trio. Even though he lost to Green in the finals, Hines was unbelievably confident. When a reporter at the Oakland Tribune asked him if he thought he would win gold at the Olympics, he responded with three words, yeah, for sure. And it's even more impressive when you consider the competition just coming from his teammate, Charlie Green. Remember, Green was the national champion who just beat Hines, and he wasn't lacking any confidence either. I'm ranked number one in the world 1966 by Track and Field News. And uh, I'll end up being ranked number two in 1967 by Track and Field News. But, you know, when you talk about a sprinter and the best in the world, you're talking about Charlie Green. A reporter asked Hines about Green, and he admitted he was his biggest challenger, but then said, to tell the truth, I'm faster than he is. At the 1968 Olympics, there would be no hand timing. Everything was electronic. If the barrier was broken, it would be broken forever. Heinz made it to the finals, along with Charlie Green and all the other top contenders. And then he made history. Three Americans, one Cuban, one Jamaican, one Frenchman, one Canadian, one Madagascar. Way to go this time, Jim Hines had a good one, and also going well there is Mel Pender. It's Mel Pender, America, let us Miller, and Miller is going well. And what a finish is it going to be? And Hines comes through! Hines wins his second Charlie Green, and look at the time there. Inside the world record, the world record pending. Finally, in 1983, 
Calvin Smith ran a 9.93, just two one hundredths of a second faster. It wouldn't be until 20 years later in the 1988 games where Carl Lewis, in a bittersweet victory, would set a new Olympic record after Ben Johnson was disqualified for doping. Which means Hines Olympic record stood for 20 years. Now, to help illustrate how impressive this is, let's compare it to another legendary barrier, the four minute mile. In 1954, Roger Bannister ran the mile in three minutes and 59 seconds, a record that wouldn't even stand for six weeks. And today, it's actually not uncommon for top high school athletes to achieve it. Speaking of age, according to World Athletics, no athlete under 18 has ever ran a sub 10 in the 100, and only five have done it under 20. And the 100 meter stats get more interesting. When we look at the total of sub 10 performances across countries, it's clear that the US dominates, but what's even more impressive is Jamaica. They've produced 28 sub 10 sprinters which is incredible from a country that has a population of just 2.8 million people, which is about the same as Kansas. Of course, when you're talking about Jamaica, you're talking about the current world record holder, Usain Bolt. But the record for the most sub 10 performances goes to his Jamaican teammate, Asafa Powell, with an amazing 97 sub 10 performances. These numbers are even more impressive when you consider that out of the 189 athletes that have ran sub 10 to date, 40% of them have only done it once. So what about longevity? Or the length of time a sprinter has been able to maintain sub 10 performances throughout their career? Here, Justin Gatlin is the undisputed king. He maintained the ability to sprint under 10 seconds for 18 years. And then there's the second athlete on that list, Kim Collins. In 2016, Collins becomes the first person ever to break the 10 second barrier at age 40. But here's where the plot thickens. Rewind 13 years to 2003, Collins is the world champion in the 100 meters, clocking in at 10.07. Fast forward to 2016, and he outdoes his younger self, running the 100 meters in 9.93 seconds. The fastest he's ever run. Amidst these stories of longevity and record-breaking feats, a broader pattern in sprinting emerges. When we look back at that first graph, it's clear that the sport is evolving at an unprecedented pace. Consider this. In the finals of the 2000 Olympics, only two athletes ran the 100 meters in under 10 seconds. And in the 2023 NCAA finals, there were seven. Now to be fair, the wind conditions were better at the NCAAs, but they were still legal. So what's fueling the recent surge of sub 10 second sprinters? The easy answers point to the ground and the gear. Tracks are being crammed with more and more technology, shoes or super spikes fitted with carbon plates for that extra spring. But there's something else, something more subtle at play here. Perhaps it's the democratization of coaching and training that's truly revolutionizing the sport. Sprinting at its core is a skill perfected over thousands of hours. Not so long ago, the secrets to this mastery were locked within elite sports programs. Today, they're available to anyone with a heart and hustle to pursue it. Now, obviously, very few people are born with the genetic potential to break the 10 second barrier, but every top sprinter has natural talent. It's the mindset, it's relentless dedication, it's the meticulously optimized training that ultimately determines how fast an athlete will be. The rapid rise in sub 10 second sprinters is a topic that's ripe for debate. And there are certainly many factors at play. Yet, amidst this evolution, one fact stands timeless. The barrier first shattered by Jim Hines in 1968 still reigns as one of the ultimate achievements in sports. Yeah.